Okay, uh, gonna take up right where we left off. Uh, figured next, why not tackle the animations? We have our animation, we have our character right now, just sort of, uh, let's see, I'll put him on the screen for you here. Our character is just kind of sitting there and he is doing some blinking, or it is doing some blinking. So, yeah, not much of, not too much of anything, but it does blink. So we'll go up here. You see it is blinking. Now, why is it blinking? Because when we dragged the sprites into the scene for the character, and I'm going to go ahead and I'll just put the uh, put our character kind of grounded to begin with. It's closer to ground. What the heck? Right there. Um, and when we first placed our character in, we placed it as a bunch of images. So it immediately thought, oh, OK, this must be an animation. And if we look, here's our hero sprite. And now I'm going to push this tile palette. Uh, what the heck? I'm going to put it over in here. And we'll just leave the project view. So it loaded it in as an animation. And it created this animation for us, which wound up in the animations directory that we created. But it just made this one simple idle blink animation. And the character just kind of sits there doing its thing, blinking on and on and again. So if I. Uh, to step through, you can actually see the character kind of blinking up here as I'm kind of scrolling through the settings. Now you'll notice it is at 12 frames per second. If your animation is playing too fast, you might need to set this number. And the reason I could see that number is because over here it's saying show sample rate. Okay. And it's at 12 by default there. All right. So let's create some more animations though. Um, Let's bring in these other animations. So if we look through the Buy It Games uh, asset pack here, we'll see that we have this character, and the character has some animations in there. So character animations, idle, jump, and run. All right. Let's look at the run animation. The jump animation isn't too exciting. Uh, it basically has sort of two poses. So let's look at the run animation for starters. Now you'll see it is just, it's not divided up into different parts. So if I click on it and you see the import settings, yep, it's got a lot of them. Uh, and they're all just uh, put together. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, pixels per unit is 128, like everything else in this game so far. And I'm going to say multiple sprites, apply that. And I'm going to go into the Sprite Editor, and we're going to slice it all up using the automatic slice mode. Say slice. And now if we slice and we apply, you can see that we have all of these individual sprites now. OK. Now, you have to be a bit careful, because you see it is actually changing in size. So the question is, is it, you know, is it perfectly centered? As you're creating assets in your games, eventually, this is the quick version, you're going to be wanting to be more careful. And you might actually set up sprite sheets so that they are specifically designed on, on a grid as opposed to just being all sort of pasted in here. And this will work for now, but in a future version, you might very well want to be a little bit more, you know, if you're creating your own sprites, take that into account. Um, so we'll just uh, use that as is now. It's applied and so on. Now you can see in here, our 1x sprite sheet is all divided up into lots and lots of individual uh, images. So let's create a run animation. So down here in the animation window, we're going to look and we're going to say, ah, OK, create new clip. Now I'm able to create on here as long as I have had the hero selected or it was the last thing that was selected, right? If I went to grid, you'll see suddenly that's gone. Uh, but if I go back to hero, yep, there it is. And I'm editing the hero's animator. So even if I come down here and select something in that scene, it happens to just like leave that selected. But if you need to get back to it, just click hero, which is the thing we're adding an animation to. So we'll say create new clip. And it's going to be put in the games here. And we're going to put it in the animations directory. And we're going to call this what do we call this? Um, the other one was called character idle blink. This one would be called uh, 
character idle blink. So this one would be called character run. Character run. Save. All right, so here's the animation set. I'm going to grab all of these images and drag them into this line. Now you see it's put them there. By default, it said it's a 60 frames per second, which is no good because it's going to be way too fast. Well, maybe not way too fast. I don't know. Um, 12 is so it's kind of more of a walk there. It's kind of a, yeah, maybe 15. I kind of like 15. Okay, so let's use 15. That's our walk. So you have a walk animation. So the next thing I want to do is, uh, I guess while we're at it, we'll go ahead and we'll create this jump animation as well. So we had character run, we'll create this. We'll go in here. We're going to be in assets, animations, character jump is what I want to call it. character jump and I'm going to have to run through the same drill 128 and multiple and apply and sprite editor and go ahead and slice apply so now we have our two jumping and we can close that and we will drag these two into character jump and you'll see our animations way too fast this one probably wants to be 12 or maybe even less six all right that was gonna be a little bit tricky I wish there was more frames to that one but it is what it is character idle blink get back to that one okay so let's concern ourselves with trying to get the animation left and right happening at first. All right. So within our animation window here, now we're going to go over to the animator, right? So this is our state machine here. And we have uh, a couple of animations now. We can move them around. All right. And this is showing us the different animations we can work with that we've created idle blink character run character jump it also shows us let's see the whole thing in here it shows us that we have a potential exit to this uh, animator controller or this state machine which we're not going to really use in this one um, but we are going to use the uh, any state that's pretty likely and there we go alt so for now, the default state is this idle blink. If I right click on here, you see that it is set layer as default state. If I wanted the default state to be run, I could say set that to default. And now in my game, the animator, it would immediately go to the run state, which is what I don't want it to do. So I'll go back here, set as default state. But what I want to do is give it some reason to switch to this run state. Okay, so to change state, uh, I'm gonna say, oh, okay, there's got to be some condition met that would cause a transition from some state to some other state. Okay, so I'm going to say, ah, okay, from any state to the character run state, what would make that happen? All right, so what would really make that happen is a non-zero, uh, a non-zero velocity in the x direction, right? So I want it to be, okay, if the character is touching the ground and there is some velocity left and right. So, the, so those are the parameters I need. So let's define those parameters. I have to define them within my state machine. The state machine is sort of its own little program here. All right. So let's define those parameters. So we'll say, uh, well, a bool for whether we're grounded or not. Okay. So you have to be grounded in order to walk or run left and right. All right, and then we have another one that's going to be, we'll have a float because perhaps there's going to be something we do in here. And this is going to be the X velocity. Okay, so if the X velocity is greater than zero, we don't know the direction. We're not really worried about the direction because we don't have a left or right animation. We just have the velocity, 
right? So this transition here, I'm going to click on the transition now. I'm going to click on the transition and say, ah, okay, uh, let's set up some conditions. So the first condition would be say, oh, by default it got this. Grounded is true. So if we're touching the ground and our x velocity is greater than 0.1. So we're going to say a little bit greater than 0. So it's, if it's just sliding along, it's not really going to do anything. All right. So that's going to be the way it will transition to there. And what it'll go back to idle, what would cause a transition to idle would be let's something similar. Let's, let's say, OK, make transition from any state to the idle state. right? And in that case, it's going to go there if x velocity is less than 0.1. OK? So if it's barely moving, it's going to go back to the idle state. Right. Now, for now, I'm also going to say, let's see, does it, do I have an exit time? Uh, is there a fixed duration? These are going to be things that are going to sort of determine how quickly uh, we transition from uh, the from one state to another. We'll go ahead and say that we don't have an exit time. Uh, we do not want to be able to transition to ourself. That's kind of a you don't want to be constantly re-triggering yourself. So it's a cannot trigger self. Turn that off. So now we have uh, the possibility of uh, and maybe so let's say grounded and we'll set this to two, for example. And then we hit play. And we can see, ah, okay, it's playing. If I turn that off, you'll see if this goes to zero, it'll go to idle again. So that's interesting. So if, go, if that went to 2, it's going to stay in idle because grounded isn't on. So if grounded is on, and that changes. All right, so as long as we're grounded, we're going to do that. OK, and if this was at 4, and we switched, oh, let's see, we want to go to idle if grounded. OK, so there's another potential transition is here to say, OK, character idle blink. We went there if the velocity went back there. OK, we could also say, let's see, if we're not grounded, is that the state I was going to? Oh, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right, so let's go back to the game. The, the normal game from there. So we go back to the scene. And we have a script on the hero. And within the hero script is where we want to tell the animator about the motion that's going on. OK? So here, within update, I can just do this all the time if I want. Right? Now, I know that I've got this check here to check for grounded. Right? So when I'm in here, I could say that grounded is true when I'm in here, and grounded is false when I'm out here. OK? So I want to talk to that component. I can say get component animator. Right? animator. And I want to set bool, OK? Set bool. And the ID is what? We have grounded. And in this case, grounded is false. Right? In the other case, here, up here, we're saying grounded is true. OK, if there was something below there. Now you'll notice here, if you're jumping, you're jumping because you're grounded. Now the moment this happens, grounded is going to become false. But I'm not going to worry about that now, because that's going to get taken care of by this update loop repeating over and over again. All right. So that 
is setting our grounded. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to set the velocity that this component knows about. So we'll cut this and paste, cut and paste. But the thing we want us to do is set float. And the value there is x velocity. And what we want to tell the component about is this velocity or some portion of the velocity dot x, right? But we can't just pass it in there because we might have a positive or a negative velocity. So I'm going to use math f absolute value. All right, so I'm going to pass in the absolute value of that. So even if it's positive or negative, it won't matter. It just needs to know the, the uh, magnitude of that. Right? So we'll save that. We're passing that in. And should that happen all the time? Mm, that's if we're grounded, we pass that in. If we're not grounded, we do not pass that in. Okay, let's try that. We come over here, and we can look at the animator for now. You'll see that grounded is set and x velocity is set to zero. If I start moving left and right, the x velocity changes. If I jump, somehow grounded didn't get changed. All right, so what did I do wrong? Grounded is capitalized there. Let's see, did I... Grounded is not capitalized there. Grounded. Save. Yes, spelling and capitalization are important here. And now it's not getting set again. Probably because, let's see, false. False, that's no good. This should be true. Save. And once again, come back over here. Okay, grounded is true. Jump, grounded is false. All right. So I seem to have at least the transition. You'll see it goes to this character run based on that changing. But it didn't switch out of character run state to character idle blink state, right? Because here, for it to go there, the x velocity had to be less than that, right? And x velocity isn't changing Getting getting ahead of ourselves again. All right, I keep wanting to get ahead of ourselves. All right, so that changes and that changes. The next thing we wanted to uh, address is the fact that he seems to always be running to the right, even when I'm moving him to the left here. So how do I get that to happen? All right, that happens outside of the animator, and it's going to happen in this script. So I check. Okay, if I'm grounded. If I'm going to do some movement here, I want to say right where I change the to the run animation, I'm going to have another piece that now I'm going to say get component. And the component I'm interested in is the sprite renderer. All right. And the thing I want to do is I want to flip the x value according to whether or not it is uh, facing if the x if the velocity is less than zero I want to flip it okay so I want to say flip x equals uh, let's see hero movement dot x is less than zero okay so if it's less than zero, it will flip. Otherwise, this will be false, so it will cause it to be true. 
So uh, if it's false, it'll cause it to be false. If it's true, it'll cause it to be true. Okay. So save that. So this is what's happening. It's flipping it according to whether the, the hero, hero movement is negative. If it's negative, it needs to be flipped. Otherwise, it does not need to be flipped. All right. So now our little character can move in that direction and move in that direction. And it can jump. And here it comes again. All right. Got some serious crazy jumping power there. So when it jumps, let's use that jump animation. Okay. So what should happen? We should say, all right, um, here's the jump animation. And we'll say it'll transition from any state to the jump state if what? If grounded is false should go there okay and now the question is does this animation loop and it probably is not great for it to loop if we go back here's the animation for our jump jump not exactly cool Okay, so if we don't want it to jump, what we needed it to do is, and here's a weird thing, you need to come into the animations and choose, this was run, this is idle, and this is jump. And you'll notice over here in the inspector that for the animation, here is where we tell it whether or not to loop. So we're going to tell it not to loop the jump. All right, so... If character jump gets triggered here, we're going to come back down here and select hero, character idle jump, play. It's still looping there. Well, why did that change? Character jump, loop time is set to zero. Hmm. What might be happening? It might be triggering itself. Is that is that what's going on? Character idle blink. Yes, it is triggering itself. All right. So here's what we will do. We need to for this transition to say. Uh, settings can transition to self no okay so the moment it starts to you see there he's like when he gets a little bit of air oops he automatically starts to uh, sort of jump there. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. Now, what could be happening here, it does sometimes seem to be kind of changing back and forth. And because it's, I think what it's doing is going to idle because it's saying, ah, OK, there is no velocity. If you jump, jump straight up, it's going to go to the jumping animation. I think we just fell off the world there. Uh, it's going to go to the straight up animation and then kind of go back and forth between jump and idle. All right, so watch here. Ready? Up, jump. It's jump, idle, jump, idle, jump, idle. So that's OK. That's not the worst thing in the world. All right, so we've uh, got our character animating reasonably well. 
I would consider this a kind of a win. All right, so give that a try. And that'll be that it for this lesson.